Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Crystal Integrated Services Limited Q2 and H1 FI25 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjay Dige, Chief Executive Officer and Whole Time Director of the company. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Oh, thank you so much, Dev. Thanks for this opportunity, and good morning, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for uh, taking the effort to join on this call and give me an opportunity to address you. Uh, I would like to wish all of you a very warm welcome to this uh, earnings conference call for the second quarter and half year ended 30th September 2024. Uh, I would like to begin by expressing my gratitude to all of you for taking time out. Uh, to Mr. Barunde, who is with me here, our Chief Financial Officer, uh, and Ad Factors, our Investor Relations Team, and, uh, and our uh, Moderator Agency. It gives me a great pleasure to address to you today. Uh, brief background about the company is what I want to give to begin with. Uh, we began Crystal Integrated Services, began its journey two decades ago in the year 2000. And from a single security service provider, it is today one of the fastest growing integrated facilities management company in India. Uh, we started by catering to real estate sites, grew from there. Uh, as the real, in, uh, real estate uh, uh, expanded in Mumbai at that time, uh, the requirement for specialized services uh, were more and more predominant and therefore we started off by providing housekeeping, then then mechanized housekeeping, and then uh, today you see a complete range. So at the moment that I'm talking to, uh, uh, to you, I'm, I'm very happy uh, to tell you that today as I speak, we have offices in 28 cities. We service more than 350 customers. Uh, we service more than 2,780 sites and we have over 43,000 uh, employees who are our brand ambassadors spread all over India. So from a single service provider to a fastest growing facilities management company uh, of our country, uh, it, it gives me a lot of pride to tell you uh, we have reached here through our IPO and this call is happening is absolutely thanks to my valued uh, investors who have showed their trust and belief in us. Uh, our entire revenue is spread across uh, four sectors, if you say. One is integrated facilities management, encompasses housekeeping, sanitization, gardening, MEP, which is mechanical, electrical, plumbing services, waste management, pest control, facade cleaning, and so on and so forth. So uh, our, our forte is to bundle these services and offer a single window solution. Our forte is to also customize uh, services. Uh, we, we firmly believe customer is the king and therefore we our specialty is to sit with the customer, understand what his requirements are and to customize services which cater uh, to his requirements. Uh, our second uh, portfolio in our revenue is our security and man guarding. We started off with the security services so obviously these services have built up and uh, that is one of our very um, uh, very good skill sets. We have a great team there. So that is our second uh, portfolio. The third, which has emerged uh, very prominently uh, over the last two years, is uh, our staffing solutions and payroll management. Uh, this is also a good portfolio that we have. There are a lot of requirements which come from the customer where they don't require services but they require us to manage their payroll. So they, they require our assistance in staffing them for, for various reasons. And that is that is also a very prominent portfolio. And the third uh, one is uh, catering services. So we have our centralized kitchen in uh, Kalina, 
and we service a couple of good corporate customers uh, for their breakfast, lunch, uh, round the clock uh, meal requirements, boardroom lunches, so on and so forth. So today, these range of services we cater to almost all the major industries spanning healthcare, education, airports, railways, metro infrastructure, public infrastructure, uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, uh, retail chains, uh, entertainment and media uh, companies. Uh, so we are present in almost all verticals to either a standalone service or a bundled service, as I explained to you. Our diverse clientele is spread across government organization as well as corporates. And uh, we have two very distinct teams which manage this. So we have a presence and we are very mindful that we have a good uh, uh, good presence and a growing business in both these sectors. Uh, I can proudly say that uh, the brand value is backed by the most valuable asset which is our, uh, our workforce, uh, feet on street. Uh, they are our brand ambassadors as I told you. Our quality and consistency of service delivery has won the trust and faith of our clients. So very happy to tell you that uh, our uh, some of our biggest customers are with us uh, since last uh, 20 years, 18 years, 19 years. And if you see our corporate business and if you apply a 80-20 kind of a rule, 80% uh, revenue coming from 20% customers, almost from that the top the top three, four are with us for over 15 years. So that's, that speaks a lot about our service standards and the relationships and the value that uh, we build along with our customers. Now coming to some key points in the recent developments, the past six months have been very eventful and rewarding for us. We crossed several key milestones and are looking ahead at several major initiatives to drive future growth. In terms of business, uh, which you will be more interested to listen to, we have continued to win new contracts across our domains of business, thereby expanding our portfolio of clients and our order book, both in the government as well as the private sector. For instance, we, we won a work order from the Directorate of Medical Education and Research, Maharashtra, for uh, providing facility management services. This contract is for three years and uh, has a cumulative value of approximately Rs. 167 crores and covers multiple medical colleges and hospitals across the state. We also secured a work order from the same organization to provide staffing, staffing and payroll management services for skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled personnel and multiple medical institutions. The, at multiple medical institutions, the cumulative contract value of this is approximately Rs. 134.67 crores and the contract duration is for five years. Furthermore, we won a contract from BRFL Textiles Limited to provide facility attendant services at their premises in Tarapur. This contract is for one year and valued at Rs. 1.16 crores. We also secured a contract extension from the Directorate of Medical Education and Research Chennai for housekeeping and security services in the government, of, uh, government medical institutions under the control of the Directorate. So, till December. Uh, so, you know, two things very clearly emerge here. It is not only large businesses which lure us, but we are very, very mindful about acquiring smaller businesses also, because in totality, we will have a good presence in the market. We are very delighted to convey the business acquisition of a prestigious Nicomac Taikisha, also Clean Rooms Private Limited. They are based in Hyderabad. We have been selected uh, as their uh, vendors for their uh, staffing service provider. And we are expected to, over a period of time, deploy 400 staff at their various plants, at, at their plants in Hyderabad. So these contracts leverage our broad range of services, our ability to integrate multiple services, and offer a single window customized solution, as I mentioned at the beginning of my address. Waste management is a global challenge, as the generation of waste uh, would only increase every year. We aspire to venture into this space keeping in mind the future requirements, and we are very happy to convey to you that we acquired the waste management contract from Thane Municipal Corporation. This is a collection and disposal of waste contract, uh, worth Rs. 71 crores. Uh, again, the value is not so important, but the contract is applicable till 2026 June, and what is important that the contract uh, helps us build our pre-qualification for future such contracts. Uh, we expect there will be larger contracts across other municipal corporations also which will come. 
and by by servicing such contracts we we naturally qualify to bid for all municipal corporations across the country for such works the important aspect of our strategy is to harness uh, uh, in uh, going forward the important aspect of our strategy is to harness innovation science and technology and uh, develop new services in our portfolio in september 2024 we entered into a mou Uh, come collaboration agreement with the team Vishnu Prasad Research Center (VPRC). They are based in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. This agreement aims to establish a collaborative relationship for the identification, marketing, and commercialization of VPRC's solid waste management technologies and, in, and, and inventions. Now, the idea behind doing this, uh, uh, friends, is to very uh, clearly uh, convey to you that. only waste collection and disposal was not our uh, uh, agenda but that was our first step forward everybody knows uh, that there is a big scope there so we are very very keen to bring in science innovation and technology in this domain as well so that not only we back similar contracts but if we are able to add value to the various municipal corporations then generate uh, larger volumes of business for us uh it will be better for both our company the investors and the society at large so that is the entire focus uh, vprc has extensive extensive uh, research and several patents in uh, bio degeneration and solid waste management uh overall the research center has about 69 patents the organization specializes in bio enzymes which help break down biodegradable waste this patented technology gives them a competitive edge in solid waste management our agreement shall allow us to jointly utilize this technology in various industries we will be working with vprc to market and commercialize this technology this would enable us to add value and forward integrate our services in waste management uh, the service is expected to be a high margin offering within our bouquet of services as mentioned we foresee technology to play an important part in our future growth strategy both for business growth as well as boosting efficiencies in line with this vision we have established a new uh, we have established a new vertical and uh, rather there was this service which was already present uh, which is mep olm we have just we we have taken a very firm step step to strengthen this and uh, and 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 we we want to have a fifth uh, portfolio in our business uh, revenue which will uh, which will be namely the technical facilities management so everything that we do uh, with uh, with the latest innovations the technology new engineering science will all be uh, will all be a part of this new portfolio so right now we were all witnessing our growth in port portfolios which was uh, ifms staffing payroll uh, security services and the catering and this now technical facilities management all of you can expect this to emerge as, as our fifth uh portfolio to offer technical facility management uh, shall leverage our interest in technology with services involving robotics and the applicability of ai we believe this will help achieve higher quality standards better operational efficiencies and thereby enhancing uh, profitability so overall our aim is to be the partner of choice for business and this has always been our aim and establishments for the entire gamut of end to end facilities management across the nation and that's the reason that we have now presence in our 28 cities uh, very recently just last month last month we uh, had uh, we started our new two establishment new good offices in gurgaon and bangalore while doing so our focus always shall remain on delivering sustainable value to our stakeholders uh, uh, we will always remain committed to deliver uh, valuable services to our um, customers and we we always uh, will look forward to your support as we go as our valuable invest i now request uh, my colleague and cfo barun uh, to take his uh, address forward okay. good morning everybody now first i will uh, discuss with q2 fy 25 so we reported to 66.16 year in revenue during q2 fy25 with 13.49% year on year rise 
Growth was primarily driven by several new contracts owned during the period, coupled with an increase in our average billing per contract. Our EBITDA, excluding other income from the quarter, stands at 17.01 CR, growing at 2.34% year on year. EBITDA margin is 6.39%. Investment made towards strengthening our workforce as well as marketing expenses has a bearing on the margin. Our PAT during this quarter is 15.10 CR as against 11.85 CR in the second quarter of FY24. The PAT margin stood at 5.67%. Earning per share for this quarter is Rupees 10.83. Now coming to our uh, H1 FY25 numbers. Now our revenue for H1 FY25 came at 523.31 CR in revenue. That is 15.88% year on year rise. New order wins and higher average billing helped to boost the top line. Our EBITDA. Excluding other income for the half year stood at 33.26 year, up by 7.42% year on year. EBITDA margin is 6.36. As mentioned for the quarter, investment towards our workforce and marketing initiative dented margin temporarily. We continue to make strategic initiatives to improve operational efficiencies, such as investment in technology, robotics to cut cost. Our PAT during the period is 30.30 CR as against 20.56 CR in H1 FY24. PAT margin stood at 5.79 percent up by 124 BPS. Earning per share for the period is 21.69. This is for all from our side. We can now open the floor for questions. Thank you. I thank yeah. Okay, sir, you want to add on? No, no. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kunal Sharma from SP Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, I wanted to ask on the current quarter, don't you think we had a muted quarter during this uh, FI25 and considering the growth and the margin also have been dented during the quarter as well. So can you please throw some particular light on the overall macro, what we have been faced and what was the, you know, outlook for uh, considering the margin and the growth as well for the coming, uh, for the FI25 as well. Yeah, yeah, Kunal, thank you for opening up this, uh, this today's uh, returns call. Happy to address the question. And uh, we are into the services business and it is cyclical year on year. Uh, business and quarterly performance is uh, is reported, but the business keeps on going. And every quarter there is something, uh, 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 the work over acquisition of new uh, business keeps on having because we are we have sales teams which are working all over the country. So uh, one uh, one quarter number uh, would not reflect the way that uh, our entire year is going to go back because there is a lot of work which keeps on happening at the background, which is uh, not possible to uh, convey to all of you. Uh, so there will be, so what has been done maybe last year or year before that, the results will come in in the in Q3 or Q4. Uh, so therefore, the, it is it is all the work that is keeps on happening in the background, and the business acquisition and work orders will will be acquired over the period of time. So we are very very uh, well poised to uh, close this financial year also in line with what we have been discussing or communicating to the market uh, uh, throughout the IPO. Uh, we have in the past also grown at a CAGR of 23% and for the last three years 
And if you say six, seven years in the past, we have grown at a CAGR of 29%. So here, during my last call, I have mentioned that we will continue to grow at an annual uh, uh, speed of 25% year on year. And we will maintain that uh, uh, we have all the work line up uh, to maintain that. Even by the turnover that we have done at the end of the, this quarter, we we anyway uh, we are anyway uh, in line with those numbers. So I think uh, it is good to watch the second and the last quarter where uh, you will see us coming absolutely uh, on target in terms of our performance. Okay, and what about the margin front? Margins are we 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 are uh, Kunal. Uh, we in this sector uh, we have been. Uh, the best performing company in terms of margins. So anyway, we have we, we beat the benchmark, uh, but that we are we are, that is not enough. We aspire to give a better margin, and we have plans to give better margin in terms of our strategies, in terms of our procedures, in terms of our. Uh, service delivery mechanism in terms of our operational efficiencies. So our PAT margin always has been in the range of, uh, say, uh, 4.5 to 5.5. Our EBITDA margin always has been in the range of 6.5 to 7.5, which is anyway better. But we are not stopping at that and we are not complacent. Uh, and uh, we and therefore we have plans to even better it. But it is not right for me to say that. But believe me, we will we will uh, continue to give the returns as per the uh, trend that Crystal Integrated has set. Uh, but aspirationally, if you ask me as a CEO, we we, we will try to beat out this market and give and um, uh, give a good result. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, on the on the other side, uh, uh, that we have a new vertical, which is a technical facility management. So, are we focusing on the government or the private client only, or so it's the mix that we are focusing? No, Kunal, it will be a mix because we have see we have maintained the mix only all the time. We have independent teams handling these, so the focus is very very distinct. It is independent focus. Because uh, business acquisition and service delivery also requires very specialized things. So this is all over. The entire country is open for us. And trust me, there is a huge potential in this. Okay. Okay. And what kind of growth are they expecting for this particular vertical? Uh, there is. A, we have. We always had services which is a part of this vertical in our bundled services of IFMS. But now, I, rather only bundling these services, I am just offering them as standalone also, uh, to very very and and giving it a very specialized thing. So uh, I, this year we will see how the growth is. I am already acquiring. I am already in on the verge of signing up some uh, agreements now, which I am not able to. I am not supposed to be saying there. But these are good the businesses, very different kind of skilled manpower required and also the ability to uh, give a better margin. So maybe we will have to just wait for me to actually disclose uh, what is happening. But there is a lot of action happening in that sector. Okay, okay. And that's the last question on the catering business. Can you please uh, throw some, um, like, how is the business performed at the particular this vertical now, and how is this particular vertical has shaped up during the year as well? Because we are, it's a high margin business that we are considering, and we also, uh, in the revenue mix also, we are, uh, quietly focusing on that particular part. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, if you say last year, it was about uh, two point. It constituted about two point eight two percent of our revenue. This year, it is constituting about five point zero us. So there is a distinct focus. And uh, now, now the corporates are also. They used to earlier also outsource catering, but we have a good team of chefs. Uh, we have a good delivery mechanism. Uh, and uh, we have a different palette uh, menu uh, uh, that uh, gets curated on a daily basis. And a centralized kitchen is uh, located at a very, uh, very geographically good uh, 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 location at Kalina. So, you know, the BKC and all the other, even the western side, so our reach is there. So we have hired some very good uh, people in this, uh, in terms of chefs and the kitchen staff. And we aspire to build this. As you said, yes, the margins are very good. We are not sticking it to the uh, lunch menu or something. And we are trying to give even boardroom lunches. There are so many things happening in the company. So there are customized menu. So there is a good focus this year also. 
and also there are good businesses in government also which this company does so here also there are both uh, both the domains are open for us to perform okay okay and last if may i uh, can you please just tell a ballpark number of the what the receivable days and the working capital days for the current quarter let's say the, the working capital days are about 73 days for the current uh, capital earlier it was 77 69 and now we have, we have come out come down to 73 so which is a very good uh, uh, working capital uh, zone to play in given our portfolio composition of government and corporate okay thank you so much sir and all the best for the entire year. thank you very much for your wishes thank you a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question The next question is from the line of Nitendra Mawat from Orm Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just one question. Uh, this crystal brand and logo are owned by one of the promoters of the company, and uh, of course, uh, this are granted on a non-exclusive royalty-free license to use until September 2031. But why this arrangement has been done? Does it pose any risk to the company, especially since it is a non-exclusive kind of an arrangement? No, can you just repeat it? Your voice is echoing. So I am not able to hear it. So. Can you just repeat Sorry, the question? Your so voice is echoing. Uh, Mr. Nitin has got disconnected. Uh, we'll move to the next question. The next question is from the line of Pranav Shrimal from PINC Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. I hope I'm audible, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. moderator the, these uh, uh, these voices are a little uh, echoing or oh, can you uh, pranav uh, can you just repeat the question once uh, mr yeah, yeah. Please yeah. come uh, come yeah sir i have your handset yes this sounds better yeah yeah hello yeah sir can i get the sales mix for this quarter oh sales mix for this quarter okay hy 25 uh, 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 government we have a 74.54 percent in hy 25 the rest is the corporate Okay, and in terms of industry, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of our portfolio, yes, sir. Yeah, IFMS is about uh, in terms of percentage. Uh, one second, I will give you. IFMS comprises about forty nine point sixty five percent. Our staffing and uh, payroll management comprises about thirty three point twenty three percent. Our security services comprises of twelve point eleven percent, and our catering is five point zero one percent. so that is how the portfolio comes composition is and uh, sir uh, there was some mention that uh, you have recently tied up uh, with a institute in south uh, for a new waste management technology could you throw some light on it sir what exactly are we doing there and uh, what sort of service will be offering after the r&d is complete oh yeah pranav uh, good question i was hoping somebody asked me in the early stages because see anyway uh, waste management the problem of waste management we know we 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 know how we even deal with the waste in our uh, own uh, own homes and uh, so just uh, just if you take it from your home to a society and to a municipality you can see the scale of the the waste the garbage which is there and then if you just uh, also try to expand it to uh, to hotels and all the commercial establishment you can see the magnitude of it so there are there currently what we were doing is uh, in the the contract where that we got through the thane municipal corporation is purely collection of waste and disposal in the in the pre defined disposal area now that is that that is also one line of business but we just wanted to take it forward and we were we 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 were uh, working on uh, on how can we offer a solution uh, to dispose of the waste which is which is been collected there by various corporations and vprc has a patented technology of bio enzymes which which when used on the waste um, uh, within a particular number of days it takes care of the waste the enzymes just eat that up and so there is a very smaller residue which is uh, which is there 
So we thought if we are able to take this solution uh, to the principal corporations, then we will have an enhanced product to offer. You know, we could do a waste collection and disposable at the same time treatment. So in that context, we had this. Uh, we have got this uh, MOU done uh, with the VPRC, and it is the R&D is. Oh, R&D is over. It is patented. It is just a matter of our presentations are also uh, done uh, continuously to various uh, principal corporations, and it is just a matter of time when uh, we will uh, we will be able to get uh, some work in this area. So we are absolutely good to go, Prano. I mean, the R&D and everything is over. Okay, sir. And uh, just as a Little pop a hack, sir. So the waste management services do we offer waste management services when we say it is only in big large scale projects, like in terms of hospitals or the places that we are uh, uh, present right now. That waste management is a part of the service that we offer, and this is completely separate from, uh, for example, let's say collecting the waste of a building. Is that included in the IMS services or is this a separate service only? So, yeah. So again, this is also a good question. This. We are going to be dealing with waste management uh, uh, across uh, the uh, what? What should I say? Whether, whether it is municipal corporations or it could be it could be a large project or it could be a standalone projects. Uh, whether there there is a municipal corporation or a big township, this product can be is required everywhere. I mean, and there is you don't need to go ahead and sell this. This problem is there. So it is only how you penetrate, uh, penetrate properly, and what is it that uh, you want to do? That is the question. So we are just putting our strategies there. But to answer your question in a nutshell, we don't have a mindset of that we will offer it only here or we will restrict it there. We will offer it to every category of uh, uh, probable uh, customer that comes our way because waste is everywhere and it has to be treated. As simple as that. <laughs> And the margin should be similar, or I'm assuming they must be a little higher since it's a lot more complex and sustainable project. The margins in this uh, particular thing are definitely a little, a little higher than uh, traditional uh, services. Got it, sir. That's it so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pranav. Thank you. And a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, sir, so could I you come a bit close to your handset and speak? Uh, is my audio uh, better right now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, I wanted to understand, sir, you have, uh, like, we have some kind of margin uh, that we are currently operating at around the 6.57% range. Sir, where do we see our margin going forward over the next two to three years? With uh, these waste management, as well as some better margin businesses growing, so if you could just highlight on that uh, aspect. Uh, yeah, Madhu, uh, good question. You know, again, the, the questions on margin keeps on uh, uh, restricting me to go uh, over the board in terms of my communication with you. But like I explained earlier, also. That anyway, we are even in services sector with the integrated facility management and the other three uh, verticals, we are outperforming benchmarks. So anyway, while we went in also public, we were we had broken all the benchmarks. Now obviously, uh, as a as a as a CEO or as a business house, the aspiration is uh, to keep on doing better and better, and it is very natural that we aspire to do much better in the margins. But we maintain that we will perform in this zone. But if you see, uh, read between the lines, uh, the fact that we are adding technology, we are adding science, we are adding waste management, uh, we are talking about robotics, we are talking about harnessing AI in my in my speech. All this aim as a, at bettering the margin. They have the ability to better the margin. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, in a much better way, if I have to put that. But for all discussion purposes, I keep on maintaining that we will be in the same zone where PAT will be between 6.5, uh, uh, between uh, PAT will be 4.5 to 5.5, EBITDA will be 6.5 to 7.5. This I will maintain. But you try and understand all these things we are we are doing and which we are discussing right now. 
have a ability to give a far better margin profile. Uh, okay, sir. On the waste management side, uh, sir, one of a uh, there's a mistake where Anthony Wheat they do around 20 percent kind of margin. Can you sir expect margins on the similar level as well as higher with the bioengineering technology we disposal that we are planning? Uh, we yeah, this is a good question because you brought in uh, uh, Ramki. They they are in a different league altogether. They are huge, and you know that. Uh, we yeah. and so the way they their business is structured in a different way. What we are doing is very very different. Uh, but uh, I am happy that you asked this question. There is a gap between what Ramki does and what is there between collect chain and disposal. We are trying to bridge that gap. and that's that's the reason we are very very optimistic that there is a huge work that we can do in this uh, in this domain this is exactly the gap that we are trying to bridge but sir when you expect the double digit margin on this segment i know i can't commit uh, madhu right now okay, i have okay, no problem i i know your excitement i am equally excited and uh, i i feel really nice when you ask me the question but i can't convey that Oh, there is no problem, sir. Just final few questions, uh, sir. Uh, we understand that the DME, Tam- uh, the DME Tamil Nadu, there were going to be some uh, contract that were coming for uh, renewal or repricing. But sir, with uh, so much, uh, with the, so much, uh, I am uh, the facility management, so much competition increasing. Sir, can you expect to maintain our margins, or uh, do we see some kind of pressure going forward from this? No, no. The band, the margins are maintainable because at the end of the day, again, we are in a we we even if we are talking about government contracts, we are talking about much, government keeps on offloading contracts on a daily basis, which are in thousands. We are very mindful to which contract that we take. So generally, we we are we are qualified in in for all the larger contracts that come. These larger contracts are very well designed contracts. They are they have far reaching uh, they have far reaching impacts. on society at large so uh, and these contracts offer you very very consistent margin and that is the reason that we are also very consistent with our margins so there is no question of margin being uh, shrunk or so on so forth because uh, we are uh, we are very choosy about which contract that we get and uh, there are competitive bits which keep on uh, happening on a daily basis but uh, with with the 24 years of experience that we have with us uh, our team is very very uh, conscious as to what contracts that we bid for so there is no question of margins shrinking here we will continue to perform the way we have been okay so just a final question sir our cash has reduced from 88 crores to 18 crores uh, between the march quarter and uh, closing and as well as this quarter and closing as well as sir loans Have increased and mostly these are the related parties. They have increased from 72 to 94 crores. Can you just explain the scene, sir? Yeah, it is basically the utilization of the IPO funds that were received, which has uh, reflected in uh, in the numbers being a little different this time. I think uh, uh, while we talk to you uh, in the next uh, returns call, you will find the numbers being very stable at that point of time. Okay, and sir, this loan that we have provided to related parties, sir. Uh, so, do we uh, plan on reducing this, or so this has to be kept on increasing? I will understand. We, 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 these are all short term, and we plan on reducing them. Uh, okay, uh, sir. That was from my side, sir. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naman Shah from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Hey, sir, resolution on the good number. My first question would be, sir, uh, because of some issue, I couldn't hear the uh, service sales mix. Could you please uh, give me the service sales mix? Like yeah. how much would be IMS and how much would be staffing and catering? Yeah, yeah, Naman. I'll just give you. I am, your voice is also not coming very properly. But uh, if I am audible, if I am, I am audible to you. <laughs> our sales mix is as follows: IFMS is forty nine point sixty five percent. Staffing solutions and payroll management is thirty three point thirty three percent. Thirty three point twenty three percent. Our private security man guarding business is twelve point eleven percent, and our catering is five point zero one percent. Okay. Okay. Thanks. 
So one thing I had a uh, question on uh, number. Uh, sorry, what will be the number? Could you come close to your handset and speak? Are they better now? Yeah, yeah, a little better, number. Okay, I just wanted to ask the number of employees. Could you give us split between how many those are uh, IFMS employees, how many of those are staff, and how many are kids? Yeah, yeah. In IFMS, we have around 23,000 uh, employees. In uh, staffing and payroll management, about 12,000 employees, 12,139. In security, man guarding, 5,800. Or and in catering services, because these are only our staff, so it is 132. Oh, okay. And uh, sir, if I could get up the employee uh, kind of call, uh, so we understand the sort of the service bundle, right? So in, in in these contracts, let's say typically hundred crore contract, for example, is a bundle of IMS and uh, uh, catering. Say. So how much of these would be? Uh, so so in terms of contract, uh, what would be a per employee kind of cost? If I could so, get. That. Uh, uh, so Naman, the, your question is uh, question is uh, uh, good. But it is very we, 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 it is very difficult to define that because it depends on so many parameters like uh, what is the customer site it starts from there I mean whether it is commercial hospital whatever then uh, based on the survey how many people are required man machine material uh, other uh, equipment and then there is a combination so these are in these comprehensive contracts it is very difficult to keep. Uh, give ballpark figures like that because it is combination of many, many, many things. About seven, eight different, different services being bundled together and uh, the various SLAs which are there. So it is very difficult to give you that uh, number, number. And uh, probably a segment is uh, by cost. Could you provide that? No, no, I didn't. Uh, I uh, didn't uh, hear, hear you properly. Uh, am I open? Yeah, yeah, but it cracks in between. Hello. So, a couple of words just go, go off. I mean, I, I just get a garbled kind of a thing. Ask me again. Ask me again. Yeah. So, uh, so I was asking about a per em a segment by employee cost. Let's uh, IFMS has many 3,000, right? Our employee benefit expenses are, for example, 100 crores. For example, so I will so give you something. I will, I will give you something. Again, I will tell you something. Basically, uh, we are fully so because of because of these con contracts and we are fully compliant. There is uh, to simplify this uh, answer. I will tell you there are two. They, the government has stipulated wages. These are state yeah. wages and these are central wages. So if you go on the government website, they keep on changing on a on a six monthly basis. So any website you will get the you will get the ballpark figure of the salary, and after that is how we bundle it and what we loan on that. So I think that should answer your question uh, primarily because it will it will give the government portals of the labor department will give you that. So the benchmark rate will be that, and after that the bundle services and all those things will be triggering. So in case you want to do some kind of calculation, then you will be able to get some kind of guidance from these rates. You can refer to the state rate and the central rate. Okay, okay. One last thing from my side. Uh, uh, throw some on uh, any up tenders or orders that have uh, to receive. Uh, this, this is typically a forward looking that I can't uh, make a statement like that. But like I, but uh, again, one thing that I am reiterating, like we are, uh, and uh, I take this opportunity to explain. Maybe everybody can listen to this also. Uh, we are 24 years in this business. Our government, uh, our entry into the government uh, sector started in the year 2003 or 4, and our team is working on various government tenders since 2003 and 4. So now you can understand that why we are so good in this business because. Uh, <clears throat> It is cyclical. You know, new tenders are being explored. It has been worked on. And, and now we are doing this exercise. Our tender team is doing this exercise on a pan-India basis. So every day, while I am speaking to you, there must be about half a dozen tenders which are under evaluation, which are under uh, uh, 
uh, under uh, what do you say survey uh, which are under approvals of different authorities and then and these are typically 3 year plus 1 year 4 year plus 1 year tenders so it is it is a cyclical thing and therefore this just doesn't stop it will just keep on growing and growing and growing year after year and today after 24 years while i am talking to you we are in a situation that we have to have meetings actually to refuse this uh, the work then taking work it is very easy but if we have to be very consistent and do uh, uh, emerge very very strong in this domain then uh, it is very important to have this process and evaluation of tenders on a day to day basis so we are just going to grow i mean to answer your question in a in a very good way that we have already been growing and every week every day something happens in this domain oh thank you sir uh, just one last question before i can i uh, so i just want some clarity uh, uh, on the metro 3 contract so pre- previously we have uh, associated mumbai metro the and yellow line so have you been able to waive the contract for aqua or is it pen out or what is this in that uh yeah this is also a good uh, uh, question now as the new uh, we are already servicing this contract and as the new lines are opening currently they are all under the project management uh, purview and they are working on various uh, uh, various paperwork and documentations to get uh, the tenders uh, designed and once they are uh, they are, they are ready with that then they will uh, upload these tenders and that will give us the opportunity to bid for them but we will bid for all the tenders across the country okay sir thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you the next question is from the line of nikhil shetty from noama wealth management please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a decent set of numbers sir so my question is uh, on a uh, uh, you know the order book so if you can help us to understand what is the total order book currently we have i mean in terms of uh, number uh, orders we received and uh, and if you can help us to understand how much amount of orders we have bidded for this year okay good question nikhil thank you for uh, being here and we we already we have five, we we have closed at uh, half year at 566 crores and last year uh, 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 uh so we we have uh, so we've already uh, uh, we are very close to our order book position for the last year and now for the new year with these two tenders also the ones that we have disclosed which we have added uh, we are we are good to go with our our targeted numbers for the next uh, for, for this financial year ending uh, 2025 uh, also in corporate side there are uh, there are new uh, agreements which are already under the process of being vetted by the customers and uh, and uh, it is just a matter of deploying so those numbers will also reflect uh, in our uh, uh, in our uh, uh, in our uh, next year next month uh, calculations so we are we are in terms of government size also and in terms of our corporate also we are absolutely uh, good to go in line with our uh, target revenue numbers uh great and sir um, um, if i understood correctly uh, this first half our uh, ifms contribution was lower i mean primarily maybe because of the seasonality as you mentioned earlier so with this uh, dme maharashtra contract getting getting in can we expect uh, you know h2 margins can move over 7% uh there we are, we are also expecting uh, something uh, uh, we are expecting to enhance our margins again but we as i am saying we are anyway better than the benchmark and with these contracts and also with whatever is happening uh, we aspire to better only and uh, and these margins only thing uh, number wise i i am not supposed to disclose Uh, but the kind of work orders we have backed the kind of work orders that we are having in our kitty uh, we definitely aspire to uh, enhance the margins and give uh, better returns at this uh, financial year end great sir that's it from my end sir thank you so much thank you thank you thank you 
The next question is from the line of Hina Vora from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is the continuance from the last participant. You know about the order book size or the contract size. You mentioned the number five sixty six crores. Uh, that would be till H one, or is that from last year and then two new contracts in this year? No, it is cyclic. It is not from last year. We have added new business also, and there is new business okay. which is getting added also. So okay. every month sure. it it keeps on getting added, uh, uh, Sheena. Okay, so this I sixty six is till March of twenty four, and again over the H one we have already added a few contracts, correct? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now also because our efforts of adding new business in the corporate side and in the government side is continuous, so okay. it it just doesn't stop. So every it it keeps on going. So and there are also there are many a times the renewals and everything happens in the last quarter also. So last quarter also we we uh, tend to uh, uh, get a very very good order book. Uh, good side. Okay. With so sir, the H one, how much will we uh, we have added uh, new contract ballpark number? In H uh, one. Yeah, in H one until now basically. The number of contract H1 we have grown at third. Uh, we have grown H1. We have grown by 50.88 percent. But 50.88 percent of revenue has what we have added in the uh, H1. Okay. Okay. No, no. I was just asking for the contract uh, basically because the entire will not come back. And because uh, why I'm saying it 15.88 because uh, there will be multiple contracts or in different. Yeah. different So it will be. Uh, okay. Just tell you that you can email and you can have it because the contracts are there. So okay. I think it will be difficult for me to read it out just now. But yeah, if you are sure still keen, you can always email and we will see the kind of. I I will do that. Okay. okay. And mostly and most of them may be available also. Sure, sure. Okay. And this uh, second question will be on the waste management, the new venture that we are doing, right? Can you just please? I'm I'm new to the company. Can you just help me understand what we were already doing, and what will be this new service that will be providing? Hmm. So yes, uh, so good question. And uh, uh, what currently we are doing is collection and disposal for the Thane Municipal Corporation, uh, which okay. is also a very good contract. And uh, to give you a little more detail. <laughs> is uh, these kind of so these kind of contracts are required and also every municipal corporation uh, has to award uh, has to manage waste so to manage waste they have to out certain uh, certain uh, activities this is a very basic activity which a municipal corporation has to outsource so uh, just to give you and everybody who is listening a sense of the magnitude of this activity so the, Just a 71 crore kind of a tender, but because of we acquiring this tender and doing this activity, we are accumulating a lot of experience, and we also are now pre-qualified to bid for all the other municipal corporations. So you imagine about 28 states uh, and eight uh, nine union territories, the number of municipal corporations which are there. So Crystal is now geared up to bid for. For all municipal corporations, so you know one small work and one small contract attender for for crystal, the benefit is very far fetched and year on year. You know that is where when I when I answer all your all your very good questions, I answer them very confidently in terms of even margins or revenue or so on so forth. Because even if you apply uh, normal logic, you will see the magnitude of such contracts. So coming back to your question, what we are doing is we are doing something which is collection and disposal. Now we don't want to just stop at that. We want to add value to the uh, municipalities by offering something which is uh, uh, which reduces their burden of uh, reducing the accumulated waste, what is called as legacy waste. You will see there are dump yards where all of this is there. So if we can offer them a solution to reduce that waste. and create a much healthier environment you know why not and therefore we have these mou with uh, vprc who have patented technology in uh, bioenzymes uh, which take care of this problem 
so therefore uh, therefore we are very uh, very excited about this it is nothing that uh, it is it is very natural that we will upgrade ourselves from only collection and disposal to something which is a more solution oriented to the municipal corporation so from there, that is my entire philosophy behind uh, signing up this agreement with vprc and this is this is very helpful just another thing sir uh, the you said we were pre-qualified now right for bidding across states for municipal corporations is anything coming up for renewal anything we would no anywhere you know, we were already bidding yeah we have uh, that's also a very intelligent question we have our tender team which works on this uh, on a daily basis so obvi- obviously there are tenders mapped and there are offer dates and renewal dates uh, which are mapped uh, i like this question because there could be some co- some tenders which are awarded 3 years back and they could be coming in for renewal so we have we 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 have that uh, mis with us and that is how the tender team keeps on working and that is how this business is cyclical you know it will never ever stop in life until somebody decides to stop it and we will yeah, just keep yeah, on growing yeah. at a awesome pace and we will just uh, keep on building our margin profile i mean if somebody understands that then so many questions uh, people will just stop asking me because it yeah, is, it is yeah. it is the beauty of our business we will just keep on growing and growing correct so any anything in the pipeline in the near term maybe like couple of days something that we are already bidding for just you know rough time there is lots which is happening only thing i am not okay. supposed to be telling you but they, be, trust me they, there is a huge activity happening on the back end okay okay and this is okay so this, this is all from me thank you so much thank you sir thank okay. you The next question is from the line of Aditya Shah from Meteor Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, you have two segments, right? One is the soft service and the hard services. So, can you just shed some light on that and what kind of revenue do you generate annually from it? Yeah. So, it is like soft services, hard services. The way they are there. The soft is the softer kind of uh, housekeeping. uh which is uh, uh maybe cleaning of your washrooms cleaning of uh, your office areas cleaning of the desk areas where you where you sit and work cleaning the pantry areas uh maybe when you go to office and if you are even sitting here doing this call and you uh ask somebody to bring some green tea for you so those are those pantry services uh currently also there are many services Uh, where large companies offer is their entire inventory and vendor management these uh, are also sir, sorry just just about the hard services part and the revenue generated to them just that was the main thing sir hard services the revenue for the hard services the revenue generation has the scope to have a better revenue because these are these have technicalities in that so there is mechanical electrical plumbing that is there is hvac if there is carpet shampooing that there are equipment which are required so the revenue from the hard services uh, would be a little better even the margin in hard services will be a little better than soft services and annually or a half year i don't know but how do you see the increase in this particular service Yeah, yeah it is our sales process so we we uh, we are we have targeted uh, sales process where uh, we pitch for both these services hard services soft services again where we are we, the kind of prospective customer through the pipeline that we are dealing so in manufacturing segment now we have two manufacturing uh, two scz offices for example and we are going in a big way in, with this make in india industrial corridor two offices we are open and we are servicing to all manufacturing units pharma units there the entire push is on hard services so you know our revenue also will have a good uh, uh, growth there and our margins will also have a good growth cut to that industrial zone to a city city may have a requirement of soft services which are a little more but a new upgraded infrastructure which will have hard services also required so it is okay. it is all mix and match you know i will not be able to exactly pinpoint as to how much is this and how much is that and because there are so many things that we bundle and offer in ifms also so i have said enough Yeah. Fair enough, uh, but just if you can give a ballpark percentage, for example, like the hard service part can increase by ten percent, fifteen percent, or five percent. Like in percentage wise, will also do. 
Oh, I do. To be very honest, Aditya, I, I I understand your interest in that, but we have not have this by bifurcation at the moment. Okay. Question. Okay. But again, having said that, your questions are very interesting. You can just email to us, and we can we can tell you. But I think because currently also uh, we are having IFMS as bundle services, which is more, it will be very difficult to derive only this number out of it. But like I told you, we are putting all these hard services in our one vertical, which is technical facility management. Maybe if you ask me this question six months forward, or say in the next one year, I will be able to give you a precise uh, answer because this will be captured in a very specific way. But question okay, is sir. interesting. Okay, sir. And one last question, sir. I believe you are fan India present, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but in your presentation, you have only one training center in I think in Navi Mumbai. So then, for a skilled service, how do you provide training to all North India, South India, even though they cater to specific businesses and specific verticals? Then how do you provide this training? Do you outsource, or do you have an in-house training with specific things, or how does it go about? That is a brilliant question. I was hoping somebody asked me about training because that is also close to my heart. We tried to set up what in what has happened in Mumbai is we have set up a model. Uh, yeah, which is uh, uh, and which is replicable. So we need not have now training centers across 28 cities or or 28 or whatever states that we have. We have a model. We have uh, Colonel Tushar Doshi, who's uh, who's ret retired uh, SPG commando, and we have Rajiv Ranjan, who's a retired ND officer, uh, who's managing recruitment. So all these are replicable, and we are replicating this across the country. Uh, and it is a very simple model where we are uh, we identify uh, schools and colleges with grounds and we tie up with their classrooms and uh, we have our regular classes there and we have our ongoing physical uh, fitness and classroom training at these locations and there is a consistent training happening at the customer space so training we believe is a consistent uh, consistent uh, process uh, you can't have it uh, at your whims and fancy. So we have one model in Vashi, and we have a replica of that uh, that uh, model uh, across the country, wherein in Vashi the only difference is the space is permanent. Across the country the space is flexible. Wherever we find the location is uh, uh, suitable for us, we will just go and tie up with that establishment and use that location for a year. Okay, so that's it from my side. So all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aditya. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Adesh Gosalia from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Adesh? Hello? Hello. Adesh, is it? Hello? Yes, yes, Adesh. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, 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 Adesh. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. So my first uh, question is with regards to the margin profile. Can you just uh, give a bit of, uh, you know, a light on uh, how is the margin between the private uh, contracts and the government contracts that we get? <clears throat> okay. Uh, I will give you the margin profile. I mean, I will give you uh, additional information also on margin profile. Margin profile in the, uh, uh, generally in government sector, the margin profile, uh, margin profile is a little better because these are all bundled services. In corporate, uh, the the requirement of bundling of services is a little less. The standalone services are a little more in requirement. So the corporate has a slightly lower margin profile. Uh, so that is in terms of the profiles that we have. And over in our other four uh, verticals also, in IFMS the profile is a little, is the the best is in IFMS the second is the staffing. The third is in the security and man guarding, and fourth is military. Okay. And uh, sir, just uh, last one question. On the catering side, uh, it is uh, uh, you have a center in uh, Kalina. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it is uh, mentioned that you are serving around uh, 218 locations. So yeah. can you just uh, explain a bit, uh, like, uh, how does this uh, work? Uh, center, oh, yeah. Uh, center yeah. kitchen and... Yeah. Uh, 
that is a good observation because in that catering also we are servicing corporate and government customers so we have a contract happening with the government for social welfare and justice so then we are servicing uh, them across their hostels in uh, and other government establishments all around maharashtra therefore the number of units that you see is more than 200 while while our corporate customers we are based in mumbai are serviced through our kalina kitchen so we we in this catering there are both kind of things one is the servicing which is done from a central kitchen and uh, one the servicing is done where we manage the kitchens also of different different establishments so there could be a hospital who already has a kitchen and we are managing that kitchen and we are servicing there so therefore you see though the kitchen is central uh, the locations are multiple but very good observation Okay. and uh, so right now uh, this is only like uh, the central kitchen is only servicing service uh, servicing in uh, maharashtra right no only in mumbai only in mumbai okay okay yes. got it then i am planning on uh, going uh, like expanding this particular segment as we have seen some good uh, revenue contribution coming in from yes. catering we have a lot of requirements which are coming from baroda and which are coming from bangalore with all this uh, monsoon thing and all that happening also with the uh, industrial uh, corridor in uh, hyderabad and chennai uh, we are working on some uh, it is on the drawing board if once we formalize something that we will definitely come back okay and uh, uh, so one last uh, thing about uh, when we are talking about uh, like we were pretty well explained the bidding process with regards to the government contract but uh, uh, what about the private contract like how does the process flow with the regards to acquisition of a private client or let's say any other corporate oh that is also a good question in private contract it is generally it used to be one year but i am very happy to tell everybody who is listening now currently in corporate also there are two years and three year renewable renewable because the corporates also do not want to go through the process of evaluation on a annual basis so it is also a very good news that most of the corporates are now renewing contracts only after two years or three years and the good news to tell everybody is last year uh, financial year also as we close 35 uh, 20 24 march we have 100% renewal so our our service ability with our corporate clients and our relationships and the kind of uh, value add that we have been doing uh, we have, we were able to renew 100% of our contracts we have not lost even a single contract and now this year we will be adding more so you can see the effect okay and so right now if i'm not wrong our sales mix stands at 75% government and the rest is corporate right yes 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 so any uh, plan uh, to change this mix like uh, increasing the corporate uh, portion or, uh, or something like that or uh, right now the position uh, is uh, the position in which we are is uh, completely fine it will be generally in the zone of 70 30 going up and down we don't want to drastically disturb this uh, this ratio because as you said the margin comes from the government also and we get in government order book pipeline state of uh, 3 plus 1 4 plus 1 year so once you sign a contract for 5 years you are assured of your pipeline and you are assured of a good margin so there is no need there, there is no con- there is no need to disturb that at the same time our uh, selling in the corporate is also happening corporate we keep on acquiring very very good customers uh, across the country but the quantum of uh, business of government is more in size therefore it keeps on happening in this ratio but we will keep on maintaining these ratios they are very healthy ratio they they will just uh, i mean these ratios are going to take us a long way in life Okay, go ahead. Okay, got it, sir. Thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: please limit your questions to one per participant. Yes. The next question is from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investment. Please go ahead. Yes. Madhur already asked, I think, one question. Yes. Mr. Madhur, your line has been unmuted. uh the line for mr madhur has been disconnected as there are no further questions we have reached the end of our q and a session i would now like to hand the conference over to mr sanjay tige for closing comments okay so i thank uh, i mean i thank you uh, thank all my friends who have been asking me questions from various uh, various forms 
these are very interesting questions i always like to do this written call because uh, i am able to share so many things that are happening in our company uh, with my uh, uh, with my valuable investors and uh, it is always great to do this call and uh, there are some questions which are so studied and very intelligent so it also gives me a lot of satisfaction answering them so thank you for asking me these questions and thank you for uh, the moderator uh, team who have moderated this and to uh, just in this uh, particular session i i can't uh, not thank my entire team at crystal uh, who have put in untiring efforts hard work across rain water uh, floods winter and they and, and they keep uh, they they keep the our customer sites up and running so hats off to them for their untiring work i would also like to thank my uh, the, my promoters my uh, chief mentor uh, for uh, having faith in uh, me to lead this uh, company and my fantastic team of senior management who bringing a huge management uh, acumen into our daily decision making which helps us be relevant in this sector and we which helps us outperform benchmark numbers and come in front of you uh, to take your questions so thank uh, the ad factors team and uh, all the other participants for asking questions thank you so much wish you a very early uh, happy diwali in advance and may this diwali bring all of you uh, truck loads of happiness good health and joy thank you so much thank you on behalf of crystal integrated services that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your line